Hello, hope you're having a great summer so far. If you're watching this, I am on vacation and I have prepared these nice little clips for you this week. Uh, this is the second one this week and uh, they are takeouts from uh, the live stream, the Twitch live stream. Uh, and uh, these clips have not been previously shown on YouTube. Before we get on to the show, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Tyler McGuinness. If you're thinking about getting into React hooks this summer, their course is a very good option. Let me read you the pitch. Tyler McGuinness launched their first React course in 2016 and it has now been taken by over 80,000 students with an average rating of 4.8 out of 5. Their brand new React and React Hooks courses just launched and will teach you everything you need to know about writing React in 2019. If that sounds appealing to you, boom, use the link in the episode description when you get the course that will tell them that you came from here, which is so nice. Thank you so much, Tyler McInnes. Now over to the clip. Oh yeah, uh, LQT has actually two questions. Um, how do you structure pair programming? Who goes first? When do you guys switch, etc.? And he also asks uh, the more interesting question, which is, does pair programming actually save time or, or add more time to complete tasks? Um, I think, so That I'll answer that, that second question. Yeah first, I think. Um, there definitely is like, for instance, when it comes to like mob programming on Twitch, uh, when I have an objective of what I want to try and accomplish in a Twitch session, it definitely takes me way longer doing it on Twitch than if I were to just do it myself. However, mm -hmm. the benefits of doing the mob programming greatly, in my opinion, outweighs the benefits of writing it by myself is that I'm, it, because I'm catching things or that I probably wouldn't have caught on my own for one, uh, for two, the, the, a lot of things we have our one perspective on how we think something might work out or what we envision would happen with building out this feature or functionality within the whatever it is that we're building and um, having other people in the chat with varying backgrounds and, and perspectives has really helped generate great ideas for these projects. For instance, like the project we're going to be working on today, the, the Twitch extension or the VS Code extension that integrates with Twitch. Um, a lot of people have uh, really contributed to that and a lot of features and ideas around what we should add into it. Uh, same thing for the light bulb project that I have. Um, and so I really think even though it might be more, more time consuming, uh, I think it saves you a lot of time in, on the tail end that you normally yeah. would spend anyway trying to fix up or create, get creative with what your implementation. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I think that the, that same argument can be applied to any kind of peer review, really. Like, uh, people ask me, like, isn't code review very time consuming? And yes, it is, because you are unable to skip a lot of quality control. Uh, I, there is so much uh, sloppy thinking that uh, you start doing when other people aren't watching. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's remarkable. It's same like uh, I also find myself the same thing with unit testing. I find like when I don't write unit tests for my code, I kind of conveniently forget uh, almost everything except the happy path. Uh, yeah. So I, I write the code and I'm like, oh god, they, yes, this is I I'm, I'm completing this so fast. Oh, it's so nice to not have unit tests. Uh, but then. As I, as I deploy it and start figuring out, like filling with it, like of course I've forgotten all the edge cases because I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it. And that, uh, and like catching errors at that point much later uh, when like I have to hunt down the problem in an entire code base instead of just the unit that I'm working on, yep. uh, it's, it's much more time consuming. And in my experience, that is why uh, things like uh, code review and, and pair programming saves a lot of time. I, I loved the way you put it, like saves end on the tail end of your mm -hmm. work. And um, another parallel that I could do is um, uh, agile uh, agile development. Um, for, for instance, um, Spotify, where I used to work, uh, what what is now very good at prototyping nowadays? You can uh, you can build like a very early prototype with just like whatever prototyping tool you have, 
and then you uh, book the user testing team uh, and they bring in people that often haven't used Spotify before, they hunt them down and then they remotely connect you so that you can see them using the thing live. Wow. And Or you can go there and sit and look at them behind one of those uh, uh, one uh, direction mirrors that they have in interrogation rooms. Uh, <laughs> and it's uh, like absolutely, it's absolutely dreadful because all the nice thinking that you have done with the app that you thought was so intuitive and like well thought through totally crashes down in the first iterations. Always. Uh, so like there's... Um, like, yes, of course, it's slower to build an iteration and then bring it to people and have them evaluate it and then take it back and start working on it and then shoving it out to new real people again and getting the feedback and blah, blah, blah. that is absurdly more time consuming than just sitting down, deciding what you want to build and then coding it. The problem is that it's gonna hit the like once you're done, it's gonna hit like reality. And you're gonna find out that oh no we built completely the wrong thing yeah. uh, and then you basically have to throw away this enormous uh, hunk of work that was just totally useless so yeah uh, just because something feels fast and, and it's like flowing and like the, the, the first part of your work do not confuse that with productivity yeah, so, so a couple things on, on that. Like, I'm just laughing to myself because I like that's awesome, by the way, and amazing. Like, that's I don't I've never heard of that being done before, or I've at least witnessed it or, or seen it myself, kind of thing. Um, and I'm just imagining myself being behind that window and just be like seeing them do it differently than I expected to, and just knocking on the window saying, "No, no, 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 click here," you know, like at a at a like I don't know frustration, but really with myself and not them, you know. Yeah, for um, sure. Oh man, now I just blanked on what I was gonna say. Oh, that's tricky. Tra like uh, sometimes it helps you just think around the problem. Like, yes. oh, what was I doing when? when I remember I was... now. Oh. This is good. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, the other thing, like when it comes with pair programming, even though it takes it's more time consuming, I think it also helps with your level of confidence that the that what you built is going to work, right? Oh, it's kind of yeah. like the same thing with unit tests too, right? You feel more confident in your code. At the end of the day, and you feel, I don't know, you just, I just, anytime I've written unit tests, I've felt a lot better. And then anytime I've done pair programming with Twitch, I've felt better about yeah. what we produced together. Yeah, um, for sure. So. Like, but it's, it, it, that's like, especially with the um, peer review, like, it makes a lot of sense that you feel more confident when somebody else has looked at your code and, like, said that, yeah, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is correct. And I think that it also, like, uh, peer review um, makes a team much calmer and more united because it um, it gives you it gives you this sense of ourness of, of collective ownership around the code. So if 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 you have code that is reviewed and you push that out to production and that completely breaks production and takes the site down, that means that it wasn't your fault in the sense that it would have been if you had pushed it on your own. It means that it's our fault and the person that reviewed your code, maybe multiple people, can also like take collective blame and then like instead of going into this blame game where somebody like falls on their sword which isn't really all that productive to be honest, it's better to like to team go like why didn't we catch this? Could we have like is our code review uh, system sloppy uh, or is there like build systems that we could add to figure out this thing and like the the whole um, retrospective or post-mortem of things becomes calmer and more more productive thank you so much for watching don't forget to check out our sponsor Tyler McInnes link in the episode description really good react hooks course among other things you watched a little clip from a live stream. If you want to check out us live, you can do so at twitch.tv slash fun fun function. We're not streaming right now, but we will start doing that after my summer break. So make sure you go there, twitch.tv slash fun fun function, and hit that little follow button so that you'll get a notification in the Twitch app when we go live next time.
If you want to watch some more clips showing what Fun Fun Function is about, click this playlist here. Or if you're ready, just click subscribe here if you already sold. I am MPJ, don't miss the clip next week.